Good. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Sumi, for inviting me, for having me here. And uh, I congratulate you for organizing a, such a wonderful Congress for the benefit of the neurosurgical community. So I am Dr. Achit Gupta, consultant neurosurgeon at Tender Palm Hospital, Lucknow. So my mentor, Professor Atul Goel, who needs no introduction in the neurosurgical world, is my mentor for last seven years. I have been directly trained under him since last seven years, and I've seen him working. I learned from him. I am started doing the practice, and now this is the work of him that I am presenting today. NTS skull base meningioma. They reach striking size before showing only superficial symptoms. They are classified according to the attachment site, the most common being the olfactory groove meningioma, tuberculum cell meningioma, uh, pinodal meningioma. The most frequent locations are olfactory groove and tuberculum cell. Olfactory groove meningiomas are relatively common intracranial lesions. They constitute 4.5 to 18% of intracranial meningiomas. They arise from the floor of the anterior canal fossa or the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone. They, they can extend anteriorly or posteriorly or across the midline from the primary side. They shows the relatively slow rate of growth and hence the time of presentation uh, has a large size. So they can be firm and vascular in nature, extends on both the sides of the midline and had wide basal attachments. So um, uh, they have blood supply from the anterior and the posterior ethmoidal arteries, anterior branches of the middle meningeal artery, meningeal branches of the ophthalmic artery. Symptom may include the personality changes like apathy, akinesia, headache, and the visual deficits. Inferior visual fields are common due to the involvement of the involvement of optic nerve and the optic chasma. They can present as fossa Kennedy syndrome with unilateral optic atrophy and contralateral papillary DNA. So tuberculum cell meningiomas they present with gradual visual deterioration scanty to the optic apparatus compression. They present approximately 4 to 10 percent of all intracranial meningiomas. The visual symptoms arise early and usually are slowly progressive. Hemis, uh, the cerebral symptoms are rare, like hemispheric deficits, seizures, altered behavior, and sensorium. So, an idea of the extent of the firmness of the tumor could be achieved by the analysis of the signal intensities on the MRI. So, CT scan shows the hyperdense lesion with homogeneous enhancement of the contrast, and they may extend into the paranasal sinus, optic nerve, and the sera. MRI shows uh, T1 shows the iso intense and with enhancement of the contrast images. And T2 images shows the ISO intense to hyper intense images. MRI brain with MRI angiography is required to define the relationship of the tumor with optic nerve and optic asthma, as well as with the ICAs and ACAs. DSS shows typically the mother in law sign, means the blush comes early and goes late. So uh, these are retrospective studies. We included 199 patients, age being 18 to 79 years. Uh, 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 patients were investigated radiologically, including CT scan, MRI, CT angiography, and few cases DSAs. The grading of the tumor is done basically on the clinical and the radiological features. So out of 199 patients, 129 patients were of olfactory groove meningioma, and 70 patients were of tuberculum cell meningioma. And there was female predominance in both the studies. So this is the uh, grading for olfactory groove meningioma. Uh, the features included size of the tumor, visual deficit, duration of the visual deficit, higher mental function affection, and tumor surrounding edema. Edema surrounding the tumor, sorry. So uh, radiological feature included the extension along the anterior fossa floor, encasement of the anterior cerebral artery, age, calcification in the tumor, and plaque nature. So, uh, so with these uh, features, we have not included in the loss of smell because it was almost uniform as the patient presented the late in the uh, natural history. So this is the grading system that we have defined for tuberculum cell meningioma. So duration of the visual symptoms and severity of the visual symptoms, these are uh, they, um, these only two points constitute the Elan point, and these are very important prognostic factor for the tuberculum cell meningioma. Other features included the cerebral symptoms, medical conditions like diabetes and hypertension, radiological features, edema, arterial encasement, nature of the tumor, and presence of hydrocephalus. So uh, for the olfactory groove meningioma, we uh, mainly planned for the unifrontal craniotomy. I will uh, tell you later how we are, we are using this. So mainly the subfrontal approach, uh, using the subfrontal approach, a part of the frontal brain just anterior to the tumor was resected, 
anterior dome of the tumor is exposed and tumor is dissected of the basal attachment. Simultaneously, tumor debulking was done and tumor tissue extending into the paranasal sinus was resected. So all the attempts were made to preserve the olfactory nerves at least of the one side. So our technique involved relatively quick intertumoral debulking, minimal use of the cautery during the surgery, and using the microsurgical technique, tumor were, was resected in piecemeal fashion. The location of the nodal point of the attachment of the tumor, anterior one third, middle one third, and the posterior one third, has an impact on the extent of surgical difficulty encountered. Outcome of the entire surgical uh, procedure remain on the preservation of anterior cerebral artery and its branches and the internal cathode artery. The radical remo removal of the tumor was attempted in all the cases. Where wherever there was risk to damage to these vessels, the dissection of the tumor was discontinued and a portion of the tumor was left behind for the vessels. The basal dural attachment of the tumor was widely coagulated and no special attempt was made to remove the dura or the involved bone. The exposed frontal air sinus was sealed using the standard techniques. So in our results, uh, for olfactory groom meningioma, headache and diminution of the vision were the most common symptoms and we could appreciate the 80 uh, cases were of grade 2 tumor. So uh, we did mainly the frontal craniotomies, unifrontal being the 88 and bifrontal being the 41. And after 2006, we, are, we were mainly doing unifrontal craniotomy. And after 2014, we are mainly doing only unifrontal craniotomies. The, our indications for unifrontal craniotomy is frontal craniotomy is eccentric tumor and the extension of, of the tumor on the contralateral side is less than one third of the total tumor volume. So we have to give the radiation in the nine cases where the tumor was aggressive in nature and histological examination suggested an atypical characteristic of the tumor. So these are our results. 110 patients returned to the normal life and no patient was dependent for the daily activities of the living. The patient appreciated the improvement in the higher mental functions, including memory, concentration, behavior after the surgery, and the recovery of the vision can, could be seen in 50 cases. Seven patients of the grade 3 tumor died in the immediate post-operative period, cause of the death being the hemorrhage to the site of the operative field in three cases, and in fact, in the titrary of the anterior cerebral artery. Asymptomatic recurrence could be seen in 11 cases, but no patient required surgical re-exploration or the radiation therapy. So this is our first example where we can see the uh, T1 contrast that will image showing the contrast enhancing olfactory guru giant meningioma. And in the actual scan, actual scan, we can appreciate the relationship of the tumor with the anterior artery in the vessels. So lower down are the post uh, uh, surgery images which shows the uh, uh, good, uh, good excision of the tumor. This is another 75 year old male patient we showed olfactory groove, large uh, contrast enhancing olfactory groove meningioma covering anterior one third, middle one third, and the posterior one third of the ACF. And the, in the coronal image, we can see the tumor going into the perinasal sinus. And in the actual scan, we can appreciate the relationship of the ACA with the tumor and the ICA. So uh, this, this retinal scan uh, post-surgery uh, shows the good clearance of the tumor after the surgery. So this is another CT scan of the um, patient of the 45 year old female patient, which shows the contrast enhancing olfactory groove meningioma and the post-op scan shows, this is the, uh, this is the first uh, slider scan shows the uh, 13 years post-surgery, this uh, MRI, which shows the complete excision of the tumor and no recurrence. But at 17 years after the surgery, in the coronal scan, we can appreciate there is some recurrence uh, of the tumor, which, which uh, definitely doesn't require any surgical evacuation as of now. So this is another scan. We can appreciate the um, uh, large olfactory group meningioma and the, in the coronal scan and the actual scan, we can appreciate the relationship of the vessels um, uh, with the tumor. And here, here is the um, uh, radical excision of the tumor we can appreciate. So our um, tumor debulking and of achieving hemostasis are the main part of the surgery. There was male female predominance and the more common the, the tumor were more common in third and fourth decade of the life the younger patients uh, tolerated the uh, surgery better and the extent of the visual deficit is an important prognostic factor extensive optic nerve involvement means the more intense relationship of the tumor with the optic nerve and the vessels and there was a surgical difficulty during pregnancy tumor is more vascular and more cerebral edema was present so definitely the surgery is difficult. 
So a bicornal scalp incision and bifrontal craniotomy has been the standard and the conventional surgical approach. So in the bifrontal approach, there should be the huge tumor size with a wide basal attachment. In the last tumor, the basal frontal and the frontal polar brain is sectioned anterior to the tumor is and uh, provide an effective, wide, safe, and quick exposure. Frontal brain uh, resection to enhance the surgical exposure of the tumor was initially described by the Cushing's and Dandies in 1938. However, only a few subsequent and modern articles uh, discuss the validity of the frontal brain resections. In our case series, we did the frontal uh, brain resection to expose the uh, tumor widely and safely and quickly. So our pol surgical policy remained the coagulation of the dural site of the tumor attachment and maximize the tumor resection. Only in the case of anastosis or the bone projection, interfering with the surgical process, we did the removal of the bone. So in case of a extension of the tumor on both the sides of the anti-canal fossa, basal dura, the extra canal component of the tumor and the involved dura were resected utilizing the same exposure. The reconstruction of the skull base was done using the vascularized pedicled pericanal graph. The grading scale assisted in us in characterization of the aggression of the tumor and in prognosticating the potential of the recurrence. So uh, regarding the tuberculum cellie meningioma, uh, we mainly use the basal unifrontal craniotomy with a patient in spinal position and the head extended. Craniotomy was extended to the orbital roof inferiorly and to the midline medially. The frontal sinus was opened wide to achieve the basal exposure. The frontal brain was then retracted off of the orbital roof gently so that we can preserve the olfactory tract at least on the one side. So medial part of the saloon fissure was opened then to drain the CSF and lax the brain. After tumor was exposed, the optic nerves and internal chitrate arteries were identified. Tumor progressively disconnected from the site of the dual attachment. The space for basal dis dissection and coagulation was obtained by simultaneously tumor debulking. So total and radical removal of all the tumor was attempted. The site of the tumor attachment to the dura was coagulated and the part of the dura grossly involved by the tumor was resected. So this is our approach for surgical approach uh, strategy. And if there is any risk to the damage to the anterior cerebral artery and the internal chitin artery, its branches, the dissection was discontinued and the portion of the tumor was left behind. No special attempt was made to remove the bony hyperostosis unless it interfered with the line of surgical vision. The base was reconstruct, reconstructed and the open frontal air sinus were sealed with the vascularized pericranial and the galley flaps. So these are our results. We, out of uh, uh, 70 patients, 59 had total resections and 11 patients had subtotal resections. 63 patients underwent unifrontal craniotomy, subfrontal approach, and the one patient underwent tenor craniotomy as the tumor was projecting laterally. And the four patient appreciated has to, has to undergo bifrontal craniotomy and one patient required transfrontal root season. So uh, there was damage to anterior cerebral artery and anterior communicating artery in four patients. And there was successful suturing of the vessel was done in one patient. There was complete disruption of the optic nerve in five patients. Three out of the five patients were in, uh, we were not able to identify the optic nerve clearly during the surgery. So extension of the tumor in the optic canal, we could see in six patients. And in those patients, optic canal was opened to resect the tumor slowly and gently. So we could appreciate 70% improvement in the vision. 70% of the patients showed the visual improvement. And uh, 56 patients returned to the normal life uh, without any help. And 11 patients required uh, um, uh, were independent for day-to-day -day activity, but required help in the uh, in the in their professional life. And one patient was dependent for life uh, in day-to-day -day activity. So we had two post-operative death. One being because of the CSF anorrhea following the meningitis and uh, followed by meningitis. And one patient had AC injury due to extensive resection of the tumor. So uh, we had the patients with temporary diabetes mellitus in two patients post-operatively, and there was very slow. Incomplete recovery was seen in one patient of grade three tumor. So these are the few examples. So in this uh, first image, axial image, we can appreciate the tuberculum celli uh, contrast enhancing meningioma, where the uh, we can appreciate encasing the bilateral ICS. 
and the same can be appreciated in coronal and sagittal images so these are the our low down our post operative images which shows a complete excision of the tumor with the preservation of the other major vessels so this is another example showing the contrast enhancing uh, tuberculum cell attachment of the meningioma encasing bilateral icas and the part of the tumor is also going into the cell so uh, the, again gently we have removed the part of the cell uh, cell tumor and the, there was a complete resection of the tumor preservation with the preservation of all the major vessels we can also appreciate part of the uh, tumor uh, over the icas bilaterally which were left behind this is another case we can appreciate the large tumor um, uh, uh, contrast enhancing tuberculum cell meningioma supracellular meningioma which is displacing bilateral ica laterally so and the part of the tumor is also going into the cella so this also we underwent from the unifrontal subfrontal approach unilateral subfrontal approach and we, uh, we could appreciate the complete excision of the tumor these are some other uh, more examples are there that we operated during our study so in this tuberculum cell meningioma also showed the female predominance and the most common being to third to fifth decade of the life younger patient tolerated the uh, surgical procedure better than the old patients as the uh, these tumors are always uh, quite vascular uh, systemic factors like hypertension and diabetes mellitus could affect the surgical procedure and outcome to a certain degree the extent of the visual deficit was a single most important factor that determined the course of the surgery that's why in our grading system these uh, visual deficit was given very due importance with the elan points the more intense relationship with the optic nerve and the ica Uh, means the more difficult is the surgery the presence of enostosis and hyperostosis was seen in more firm varieties of the tumor and uh, the invasion of the tumor into the optic canal and the paranasal sinus indicated aggressiveness of the tumor so unifrontal approach was superior to the tyrannal approach in that it is provided it provided symmetrical and wide exposure and direct access to both icas it had the advantage over the bifrontal exposure of avoiding handling of and potential damage of contralateral olfactory nerve that's why we could uh, we could save the uh, at least one set of the olfactory tract and the nerve with the resection of the dura and the bone the chance of leakage of csf was high our conclusion remains the post grading system for olfactory groom meningioma can characterize the nature of the tumor the score help in streamlining the pre operative evaluation and predicting the course of the surgery and its outcome tuberculum cell meningioma the general neurological and the visual outcome of the surgery is increasing and the grading system strategy could be helpful in the planning of the surgery thank you so much